Hey, this is George. This is Real Talk with George and Frazier. We do have Frazier logging on shortly. Today we have a really good show. I know we always say really good shows. It's just the fact that I'm excited to talk to some of these guests that we have lined up and booked for the show. Um, today we have artist Tate Dims with us. So he should be logging on shortly. And it should be a good interview. Um, Tay, how you doing? You can hear me, boss? I can hear you. Welcome to the show. We we ain't started yet, right? Uh, we're live right now. Oh, shit. What's happening? How you doing? <laughs> doing great, my brother. <laughs> uh, nice, nice, nice. Thanks for being on the show. We greatly appreciate it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Frazier will be with us shortly. He's logging on. Just got home from work. All right. All right. Well, shit, I'm going to go get me something real quick. All right, my nigga. Sure. Go ahead. Frazier, how you doing? Hey, how's it going? Sorry about that. Computer slow. <laughs> All right, man, it happens. It definitely happens. <laughs> we got Tay with us. He's just stepped away for a minute going to get something. Um, I see you got a little cut. Got cleaned up <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. You aspire me next. You say, no, hey, my head tears up too. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. You know. I you do that one, man. You have some fun, man. Yeah, yeah, man. You know, I... Uh, Wanted to apologize to the guests. We've had a few cancellations, um, but we definitely have some great shows coming in. What's happening? What's happening? What's going on, brother? What's going on? Ain't that man just chilling, my brother? You know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, right. Awesome. So welcome to the show. Yeah, um, yeah. Greatly appreciate you being here. Tell the fans a little bit how you got started. Woo! Want to go on that world all right so we're gonna make a long story short right so um to tell you the truth everything really started from me being in miami playing football like that just go away a little kid having a dream so <clears throat> just really just make a long story short man just like coming up i always had a thing for music i always loved music like it's just part of my life like and like junior high like i played in the band you know so coming up you know what I'm saying? Where I'm from. If you're not playing football, if you're not playing basketball, if you're not running track, you ain't doing nothing. So, you know what I'm saying? Music really wasn't what everybody really was on. So, you know, when I got older, you know what I'm saying? Football didn't play out the way that, you know, we thought it was going to play out. So, you know, I just really fell back into doing music. And then I just really just had the opportunity to really just move to Tallahassee at the right time, you know what I'm saying? At the right moment, at the right time. And, you know, linking up with this guy they call T-Pain. And then, you know, I really moved to Tallahassee and linked up with him. He really just, like, opened my mind to just another whole situation, you know what I'm saying, when it comes to music and just really just diving into it, you feel me? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So... Can you tell us how did you meet T Pain? Was it coincidence? Did somebody hook you up? Uh, I'm, 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 you know what I'm saying? Since this real talk, I'm gonna be real with you, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> so, like, like I say, back in 2000, I was a head coach for a little bit for for a little football, um, for a football league, a little league football team. So, you know, I was a coach. So, you know, one day we already know, like, I'm in a I'm in a relationship at the time in 2000. So. Um, John let me off early, come home, see something that, you know, ugh, just throw my whole mind left. So I called my um, cousin from Miami, and at the time he was staying in Tallahassee. And um, his name Marco Mauld, and you know, you know what I'm saying? He got Florida Film House in Miami, he shoot movies right now, he's doing his thing, doing real good. So, I, so like, he called me, I mean, my, my fault, I called him, I was like, man, I don't want to move back to this here country, bro, like, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to go back because I want to go forward. And then he was like, man, I tell you what, bro here i want to introduce you to this guy you know what i'm saying they, they go by the name of t Payne and um he had nappy heads i didn't even know who the heck he was talking about it at all. <laughs> <laughs> did not know who he was talking about but like it was a plan though like all this everything that happened for for tapism coming down to it just be real talk it was all the plan you know what i'm saying but i didn't ever see it until it just blew up you know what I'm saying? so i come down there and we used to have, they used to have this night called Black and Mild Mondays. 
if you if you pay to get in the club, you get a free black mile. You mm -hmm. know, what I'm <laughs> they call it black mile money. So went to the arm um, club that night, black mile money, and um, not knowing that this is a T pain. And, you know, we from Florida, so you know what I'm saying. We gonna jump, we gonna stick, and so you know that's where I come from. You know what I'm saying. Just getting on the floor, having a good time. So they was playing that. You know what I'm saying. That nut if you buck that. You know what I'm saying. That, that up, get up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So this guy is on the dog on dance floor with a bunch of dreads in his head. You know what I'm saying? He matted up back then. I'm talking about super big matted up. So, you know what I'm saying? He on stage. I'm like, I'm about to man. I'm about to turn up. You know what I'm saying? So it just kind of turned into a battle. And then not knowing that this guy is really the guy who Marco called me up to meet. And then, like, you know what I'm saying? After that, we both just kind of like laughed it out, got us a drink. And then, like, we just we just created a bond, you know what I'm saying? Then, like, you know what I'm saying? We created a bond, me and, me and T-Pain, to the point where, like, you know, man, we was inseparable, you know what I'm saying? Whenever you see him, you see me, you know what I'm saying? And then, like, it just it just went on from there, you feel me? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Gotcha. Yes, so sir. Tell, so, tell her how you make income. Sorry. <laughs> we want to talk about that. I even Aka then. That's a good story for me, T Pay. I even Aka. I'm dying that story. Oh, how I met Aka? <laughs> I'm oh. dying that story. Oh, boy, you want to hear that story? Oh, yes, yeah. Right. Sorry. Oh, man. Well, that's the question of the question. All right. So, um, Akon, that's a whole different situation, see. <laughs> like, they kind of, you know what I'm saying? They kind of put me on the back burner with a lot of things, you know what I'm saying? So, um, <laughs> It's so crazy, right? So with Payne, I don't know if y'all heard the story. Payne ran away from home. You know what I'm saying? Coming up, like I can't see with 18, I was about 23, 22 type back then. So you know me, T Payne, and Acon brother Boo. Like she ain't run away. I was already grown. Shit, you know. What I'm saying? But but like I said, man, Payne, we we was like real close. You know what I'm saying we was just wherever wherever he went, he wanted me to. You know what I'm saying? Point blank period. Of, he ain't gonna fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? That's just how that's just how we rolled back then. So I went to Atlanta, you know what I'm saying, with Akon and Boo. I mean, I'm sorry, we were Boo, T-Pain, and me. We were just us three, nobody else. You know what I'm saying? We we went on to um, Atlanta, Georgia. She got it. So we went to Atlanta, Georgia, right? So we went to Boo House the first night. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, I didn't, hey, I don't really know what the going on. You know what I'm saying? I'm just here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know what's going on. So... You know what I'm saying? We went to Boo House. We stayed the night at Boo House. So like early that morning, right? It's a knock on the door. Bop, 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 bop. We lost. There we go. Did I come back? All right. So, yeah, I'm, like, so I'm like, hey. I can't hear you. Wait, hold on. We lost you. Tay, we lost you. You're <laughs> He's still talking. <laughs> Tay, your volume. We can't hear you. Volume. Can't hear you. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Oh, oh man, that's a good story here. <laughs> yeah, we're making a great story. We're going to make them tell it again. Watch this fish. <laughs> Hold on. Let's see if I can do it. No, it's on his end. It's on his end? Oh, man. Yeah. We're missing a great story. Tay, your mic, we can't hear you. Your mic, we can't hear you. I hear you. <laughs> Tay, your mic, we can't hear you. No, we can't hear you. We missed the whole story. We missed the whole story. No. <laughs> I heard that one. <laughs> Call us back. Log back in. There we go. Oh man, oh. that story sounded good too. You saw animation. It was, man. I saw everything. I, I saw the hand motion, the animation, everything. I'm like, oh man, I'm missing a story, man. <laughs> oh, too funny. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. <laughs> You said that was a good story too. Y'all, that was a good story. I believe it. I definitely believe it. Oh, there we go. Here we go. All right. Can y'all hear me? 
And now yeah, you, we, we, you start all over again. We want to start from the beginning. That phone call messed me up. So, so where y'all stopped off at? What? Well, you knock on the door. door. That's where we stopped. Knock on the door. Right, knock on the door. Right. Knock on the door. Right. The door, right? the door. I'm like, bro, somebody at your door, bro. So, um, he was like, boom. So I went to the door. Answered the door. You know what I'm saying? It's the police. Like, bang. You know what I'm saying? Hey, bro, you got a victory at him. Bro, you got to get up out of here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you know. Me and Payne helping this man here get all the clothes up out of this house, get everything, because it was just going down right there and there, the police and there and everything. So, you know, we we getting all this stuff out, putting it on the side of the street. You know what I'm saying? Boo got the, the ugliest looking face in the world right now. You know what I'm saying? Now, hey, now, hey, now, being real with you now, I, I give Boo, you know what I'm saying, props, because at the end of the day, man, he put his life on the line for pain. Like, he really went all the way out. You know what I'm saying? Like, for real, like, we real life, so... So, you know, so I'm helping him get all this stuff out. Boo give me his keys. He like, yo, man, I need I need you to go find a hotel. I'm like, bro, I don't know where I'm at, bro. I don't know where I'm at. So whatever, get his car. You know what I'm saying? Time I had license, paying didn't have license. So, you know, man, I'm looking for the first. I don't give a damn what it is, a motel, holiday inn, I don't care. Bro, right. it, was, it was a red roof, bro. It was a red roof, right? Pull to the red roof. I'm like, bump it, dog. This is where we going to stay at. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just what it is. So, like, we, we staying at the um, Red Roof Hotel. So then, you know, he get on the phone with Akon then at the time. And then this one, I really, because this is my first time ever really meeting Akon. So this one, I really felt something from the start. You know what I'm saying? Then I go outside, I look outside, man, I see Ferraris and all kinds of stuff pulling up to the Red Roof. I'm like, man, this is really for real right now, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like this is this is real life. This is really going down. Like you know what I'm saying. Like Absolutely. for real, for real. So you know, Akon came in, say the day. You know what I'm saying. Shout out to Akon. You know what I mean. Um, and then like it, it was just it was just history from 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 there. But like a lot of things that I went through, man. Like I, I can I can really say that you you know like I I really had the opportunity to be that fly on the wall because I seen everything that t-pain like i really know the pain you know what i'm saying right that's at the end of the day like right, right now you know what i'm saying that's my nigga. I don't, I don't give a damn what nobody say like that's my dog because i know pain you know what i'm saying like when it comes down to it i really see what he had to do to get to what he at right now today you know what i'm saying right right understand the the the, the sacrifice when it comes to this here um business you know what i'm saying because it's, it's a real ugly business but I definitely understand the sacrifice. But that's just what it was, man. And after that, man, it was just, I mean, it was history. You know what I'm saying? Right. Can I ask you a question? Hold on, Fresh. Real quick. Okay. Um, you talk about the ugly business. And, you know, we have a lot of artists that come on and say, well, you know, you got to get your paperwork right. There's so many snakes out there. There's a lot of things. And we're not just talking about record producers. We're talking about promoters. We're talking about publishers. We're talking about people that encompass the entire music industry, you know, from start to finish. Um, watching what T-Pain went through, what did you learn and how did, how did it, you know, platform you faster for you I mean, to get to where you wanted to go? Really, just being real with you, like, what I learned from the whole situation is that, like, the moment, the, the, the moment when you let somebody into that circle and go to talk in a different type of language, you know what I'm saying? If if you don't nip it in the butt right then and there, you know what I'm saying? It's it's over. It's it's, it's history. It's it's game over. You know what I'm saying? It's it's just ain't no more looking at it down the road. You know what I'm saying? Because like that friendship, you know what I'm saying? When they break that friendship and when they break that 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 realness to the point where like you know like if you have a situation with somebody and <clears throat> You and that person can deal with it and get out everybody else and then come out of the situation, you know what I'm saying, agreeing to disagree. But at the end of the day, both of you guys getting your point across. When you break that, that code is over, man. Like, hey, man, it's like, it's so many new, it's at the end of the day, right? Artists get security guards to protect them, right? You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, when you let somebody into that circle that that you're going to keep grounded, when you let somebody in that 
going to be like, no, nah, woo, woo, you just don't got to do this, you woo, woo, you, you woo, 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 it's, it's over. It's game over, bro. And then, you know what I'm saying? Hey, it just, hey, that's all she wrote. <laughs> and I ask you in a follow-up question, um, is it the inner circle of people like your friend coming in and having your ear? Or is it like we have new business management, we're talking to new I mean, lawyers? At, at the end of the day, it's all business because us as friends, we gon' we gonna continue being loyal. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna continue on. Hey, oh bro, you you drop that nigga, you pick that shit up, you know what I'm saying? Like, like hell no, nigga. I ain't you know what I'm saying? Like nigga, you, you talk that shit, punch in your motherfucking face. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just real life, you know what I mean? But like when you got somebody, oh you woo woo woo, you nah, 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 nah. you know what I'm saying? Like it creates, you know what I'm saying, separation. Right. And, and, and like ain't nothing new under the sun. This just been going on for <clears throat> from, from way back Cadillac Records, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's it's the it's the same thing. It ain't ain't nothing really changed. That's why I'm not really mad at the game because I was always prepared for this because I was always told, you know what I'm saying? So that's why it's not really brand new to me because I was always told, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's just real life, man. Like a lot of times it comes down to business and, you know, when you're young, you don't really understand business and you don't really see the separation behind closed doors, what, what they're doing. And then at the end of the day, it backfires on management because if you look, at, at articles and stuff, woo woo woo, trying to sue such and such, woo woo woo. But at the end of the day, you left goddamn it like it was, woo woo woo. So you know what I'm saying? It's just in real life. Exactly. Right, fresh. So I'm gonna follow the same question. I used to manage too, so I know some of the things you're talking about, especially when you got two people working together and you're collaborating with certain artists or whatever. Now knowing that we had with T Pain, like what route did you go? Did you go the independent route? Or do you try to actually get signed on the label? <clears throat> now, being, like, being real with you, bro, like, my situation was so different, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, I, I didn't ever really sign no papers, you know what I'm saying? It, yeah. it was mostly of, uh, like, yo, hey, back then, that's when digital just really started to get hot. That's the, the internet, the, the MySpace, you know what I'm saying? It was just really amp up. So, you know, they were trying to use me being real as a guinea pig to get out here in this hit, um, in, a, in, a, in a digital world and to see how it works. But it, at the end of the day, it was just a situation that, hey, we were nappy boy, you nappy boy. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it played out. So wait, hold on. To follow up with Fraser, you're telling me that you were able to complete everything that you got done in the beginning with a handshake? Yeah. That, that's, that's rare. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Hey, listen, I don't have nothing to be mad about. The only thing that I tell you when 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 really times got hard for me, because being being on the road, man, you protected. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't get close to me, you can't get close to Kane, you can't get close to Jay Lyric, you can't get close to us, period. But right. the everything stopped, and then you're like, you know what? Well, it's time to go back home. And then boy, well, when you go back home, and then that love ain't really what it really supposed to be. Right. And you prepared for it, and boy, that's what like, I, you know what I'm saying? That's when, you know, everything go to hitting you. You, you got to look sideways because, yeah. you know, I'm not friendly. But at the end of the day, you know, when it comes to your 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 family, when it comes to situations like that, you know what I'm saying? You give your family member passes and to the point where like, hey, bro, all right. Up with this here guy, but like I don't know why the hell you bring this guy. I know that, that person cool, the woo, woo, woo. but at the end of the day, you know, my family member don't like me. You already telling this person something bad about me, so it's just like it gets so tricky down that lane. Like you know what I'm saying? T Pain was so it was a piece of cake, but that personal life, oh my god! But that right there, woo. How do you navigate that? I mean, how do you navigate? third and fourth cousins that you've never seen in 20 years coming and saying, could you help me with this rent payment or I need to borrow $5,000 or, you know, taking pictures of you and putting it on social media. How do you navigate that to keep your cocoon in place? Oh, because you got love for them. You know what I'm saying? Unconditional love. Like you, like you really love your family members and you, you know what I'm saying? You ain't really trying to hurt them. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, 
you really got to separate yourself, whether whether they like you or not. That's to me, that was my hardest had to fight as a person. You mm -hmm. know, separating myself from family. You know what I'm saying? And when I learn how to separate myself from family, man, like, you know, everything just I just was able to start seeing a lot clearer, seeing a lot different. You know what I'm saying? Understanding like if it weren't for my dog Jay Lyric for pulling me out the sand, you know what I'm saying? Hey bro, hey bro, like bro, hey hell no. You know what I'm saying? Come up here to Tallahassee, man. Come and chill out with me, bro. You know what I'm saying? Let me talk. Let me remind you, nigga, you take this one. You know what I'm saying? Because like that family shit can put you in a goddamn deep ass hole, bro. And right. sometimes some people can't get the hell about that shit because like it's just always belittling you just on every different situation. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it ain't nothing positive. You know what I mean? Exactly. You know, just from my experience, uh, just to speak on that. I think the thing that hurts the most is the backstabbing because, you know, you got love for family. You know, my grandmother always taught me family comes first. So right. I always got love for you. You know what I mean? But to have you go out and put my name in the street or misrepresent me or just really just jealousy, just, you know, upset that you got there or I don't have this or you showed up in this, not knowing that, you know, I had to sleep on the floor, not knowing that I had to skip a meal, not knowing that I had to do certain things to get to where I'm going. And, you know, you just figured that it showed up, you know, because I I like that when family members that you haven't talked to in a while just come up and be like, uh, my rent is going to be short, you know, and, and instead of them, you know, speaking a number that's reasonable, you know, like, for instance, that the whole rent is a thousand dollars. They want the whole thousand dollars. They don't want right. 500. They don't want 250. They just figured, oh, you got the whole thousand dollars. You know what I mean? And, and I want you to, to cut that check. And you're like, wait, hold on. You know, I haven't seen you since Christmas. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Years ago. Yeah, we don't, even, we don't even talk on the phone like that. I mean, you know, but all of a sudden now you're in this jam and you realize that I'm here. And, yeah. you know, you uh, 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 can just hit me up and say, oh, you jammed up. <laughs> you know, those are the ones that really tickle me a lot because it's just like, um, you know, I can't, I can't say no. So tell you what I do is I have my wife pick up the phone. I'd be like, mm, pick this up, answer this. You know what I mean? And she's quick. We ain't got it. That's her first thing. We ain't got it. No, I'm sorry. This, that, and the third. Boom. We ain't got it. You know, so that's my, that's my buffer. I don't have security, brother, but that's my buffer. Oh, I don't, I don't have security. I look at him still there. <laughs> they're afraid of that they're Paul afraid they would come up to the girl says baby <laughs> I know right like, what, what, what you said I can't even fall <laughs> what what's up we got a bad connection call back <laughs> call back I can't hear you no no, no call I call you back I'll call you back <laughs> hey, it's about anybody who try to do music and then you know what I'm saying when it's time to go home don't expect it to be you know what I'm saying? All love. Matter of fact, stay away. Get yourself together. Get yourself prepared. Like, build yourself back up before you get around that type of, you know what I'm saying, situation. Because, man, it can get real tricky. It can get yeah. real serious. Nice. So, now we'll see you when you go ahead, Fraser, and then I got a what question. What you just said? Now, I used to manage group. I had one younger person in my group. So, I understand similar to what you were saying. Like, what would your mentality, like, say, when you're on the road, by you being still young and then how to deal with friend and call to you why are you on the road? Right. And know you some people don't know artists had their little oh. flow going, their mozo going. It's, see, see, when see when I'm on the road, bro, I'm I'm, I'm take this. I don't, I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like <laughs> it never really ask me, you know what I'm saying, something that don't make sense. You know what I'm saying? Like. It's, it's it's like a light switch, you know what I'm saying? You can turn on, turn off, you know what I'm saying? Like, like when I when I'm at home and I go home, you know what I'm saying? I'm Octavius, you know what I'm saying? I'm 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 just me. I'm I'm that I'm I'm just me, you know what I'm saying? I'm not thinking about music. I'm not thinking about being on number one on one assistant park. I'm not thinking about being on the billboards. I ain't thinking about none of that. It's just Octavius. But you know, people, you never you like. I'm a real nigga, so a lot of times I I I catch myself 
I catch people looking at me just like, like, what the hell? Like, you know what? Like, them motherfuckers that, like, okay, I get it. I get it. Like, all right. So it's just, man, that, that's what I'm saying. It's tricky, bro. Like, you really got to have your guards up, like, 24 7 to the point where you just got to separate yourself, man, and just be by yourself and just really fuck with niggas who really fuck. With you. you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. So what are you doing now? I see you're in the studio. Are you oh. there for us? Or are you working? <laughs> okay, that's it. That's no, it. no. Wait. Hey, we're ready. Oh, oh. Wait, that we just on? Let's get on. We just on that. Hey, God is good. God is good. You know what I'm saying? I'm working on a new project, and I'm working with um producer um um Ghetto Styles from um Dade County. Kind of you know what I'm saying? Ghetto Styles did a lot of um Pitbull did a lot of work with Piccolo. He did work with um Luke, um Jake Money. I mean, you name it, he done. It you know what I'm saying? Like one of the to me, one of the the underrated producers in Miami, but it's one of the dopest, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you know what I mean? He made a lot of that music that a lot of you guys that heard that that, that 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 come from down that way, you feel me? So I link I link back up with him, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, like real, real cool guy, you know what I'm saying? Really got me back on the point where like the type of music that I come from, you know what I'm saying? My roots, you know what I mean? Like the the, the shit that I need to be on, you know what I'm saying? So like right now we like maybe about six, seven songs in, you know what I'm saying? And like I just finished one that we're gonna be releasing like later on this month. It's called um dance zone you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. produced by ghetto styles and i'm talking about man you know it's it's just that up feel good music you know what i'm saying just ready place you can't sit down you just can't stay still and that's just where i come from you know what i'm talking about exactly exactly so tell the truth so then i said are you starting to change it from when you first started out or is it the more mature tape dish we see now is that more know, mature tape dish style it's more mature, you know what I'm saying? I definitely learned a lot, you know what I'm saying? Because failure is the greatest teacher there is, you know what I'm saying? I learned so much. So it's definitely a mature take this one. It's, it's definitely on point. It's, it's, it's a definitely like on one beat I made and did that got brought like eight verses, you know what I'm saying? Just to make it sound right, you know what I'm saying? That's why, that's why I fuck with Ghetto. Cause I sent him a song, he be like, "Hell no, nah, nigga, you need to do this." Song. Get it back to him. I like it, but you got to do this here, Tay. You know what I'm saying? So like, yeah. that's the, that's what I'm used to. That's where I come from. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's definitely mature. You know what I mean? The, the music is definitely in the group. Tay, so let me ask you real quick. What about mentorship? You know, the thing is, in our communities and people that look like us, it's very hard that we get mentors that. Um, help us reach our full potential. And I noticed that you were saying a lot of times, you know, in situations or when you're out on the road, you have security that creates this barrier around you. But let me ask you, on, on social media, do you get approached a lot for mentors, ask for advice or mentoring people? I mean, really, <laughs> they don't even know how to take that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like that's what makes me different. Like, I definitely, like, people come at me and then I definitely give them, you know what I'm saying, advice, but then next thing you know, like, it goes to, go to switching up. It's just like, oh, okay, if we work on this, and I'm telling you what to do, the next thing you know, I'll be like, hey, who, 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 hey, because I don't want to send too many of this right here because it's already going a whole different way. Because at the end of the day, it's just like, you teach somebody this here much, they gonna feel like they know it all. Right. And so it's just like, I mean, people are they 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 worst they worst failures, they worst critics, they they I mean they beat themselves up, you know what I'm saying? So it's right. just really trying to go out here and, and, and help somebody nine times ten, you're gonna get slapped in the face. Right. right. True. That's true. That's that's true. Stay away from that. So let me ask you though, see from when the young Tay Dizzle, did he write his own music or now do the older mature tages write more of their own music and use more life influentials to influence the music more? All right, so I'll be real about that. All right, the old tages, everything that you always 
ever heard from me is it comes off my melody. You know what I'm saying? It comes off my feel. But now when it comes to words, I definitely give my brothers all the credit in the world. You know what I'm saying? Cause with that, them, them, them two guys really put me into the music game. You know what I'm saying? Just being 1,000 shy and cool, shy the, the um, cute dog. But like those guys really did a lot of my music and you know what I'm saying? And and just being 1,000 with you, you know what I mean? And that's just how we used to work together like back, back in the days. Nice. But that, that's very rare. You see, like, people get together like that to be the Dre's and they were Dre's working. I, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, don't write their music. A lot of people don't write their music. You know what I'm saying? Like, that is true. Like, like me, I'm going to pull it off. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to pull it off. Like, like our method was that we used to get together. I'd be like, like, you know what I'm saying? I get on the mic and I just hold my feeling. And then, like, you know what I'm saying? They were so talented. They can take that same melody and put words to it and just and just make it come true. Now, for us, like, for us, now, when it comes to what I want to do, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, now, that's how I was because, like, I always wanted to feel like now, now, if they write music, they don't write music how they write music now, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, it, it used to be a little difficult. Like, I ain't gonna lie to you, it's been plenty of times that, like, shout out to Q, what's up, boy? And you know, I fuck with you, nigga. But that got up, boy, like, you know what I'm saying? Oof! But, <laughs> but talented, talented guys, but besides, you know what I'm saying? Uh, a, a lot of people that I haven't been around in the industry, like, man, my brother is very talented, you know what I'm saying? But, like, it's it, it just trying to, Kind of like Bone Thugs and, and Harmony, yeah. trying to get those guys to do the right damn thing. <laughs> so street, you know what I'm saying? They, 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 what? Woo! You know what I'm saying? So that just, that's the bloodline I come from. You know what I'm saying? Right. True. Right. That's true. So I got one for you. So what was the worst producer you ever worked with? And what was the best one you ever worked with? The best producer or the worst producer? Oh, which was the worst? And which is the best in your record. <laughs> it's like a long list over there. First producer, the first producer that I ever tried to work with is me myself trying to make a beat. <laughs> Whoa, you are you super honest? <laughs> I wanna say it that one. <laughs> that was me. That was me trying to make a beat and then trying to rap on it. And I sent it to somebody and I ain't tell them, but it was like, man, that beat garbage, bro. That beat garbage. I was just like, damn, I ain't trying to make no beats no more. <laughs> <laughs> That's not like me. I first tried to make mine. Oh, that was really bad. Yeah. You know, full loop. You know, you know that, that, that. The, the, best, the best producer I worked with was Bane Ledez. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You know what I'm saying? He's the guy who made Beam Me Up. And um, it was so crazy. Like, I had another song of, of his beat. You know what I'm saying? It's supposed to be after Beam Me Up. Yeah. But so, um, it kind of ticked me off, you know what I'm saying? But like working with Bane Ledes was was awesome, you know what I'm saying? Bane Ledes made beats for Ludacris, you know what I'm saying? He made beats for other you know what I'm saying? But when it comes to that business, man, you know, like it's like I come out with beating me up, the next thing you know, but they want me to go Hollywood, you know what I'm saying? They want me to go, huh, honey, take that nigga out the street, what? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. 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 let us go 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 let us Getting paid every day, he got he got a bonus over there. You hey, yeah. you, know, you, know, you speak if I know you, but you ain't getting paid for it. <laughs> oh, somebody now beat me up. Compare the dream girl, dream yeah. way bigger numbers than beat me up. Nah, I, I I can't can't lie on that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like beat me up. I believe beat me up. I don't. I, I I can't. I think both of them maybe went gold. Yeah. I just know that um, Dream Girl sold a lot of ringtones, and um, you know what I'm saying. That's that's what back when 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 they were starting with the ringtones. Yeah. Like 
but I know like, you know what I'm saying? It did a lot, a lot of sin. So, you know. So, really, I saw the music. Are you thinking about doing your own CEO, your own company, like you know, the line, the merch, yeah. stuff actually, like that? Like, actually, right now, man, you know, I got my um, I got my own record label. My manager, um, Vic, you know what I'm saying? What's happening, Vic? I'll make sure y'all check out my manager, Vic. Y'all can follow him on IG, Facebook, you know what I'm saying? Good guy. You know what I'm saying? Really kind of molding me into becoming business, really being behind the scenes on learning everything it takes, you know what I'm saying, for I won't be lost, you know what I'm saying, when, when it comes to the business side. Because, you know, me, I, I come from a situation that, you know what I'm saying, like, it, it, Fuck with you, I fuck with you. Nine times ten, you know, I don't be looking for fake shit. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, you know what I'm saying. He really teaching me the business. So like, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm I got the record label coming out. Also, you know, I'm doing. I'm, I'm looking for artists. You know what I'm saying? Definitely that you got to be the right type of artist. You know what I'm saying? Um, just doing it all, man. Just just one man band. You know what I mean? Just trying to just 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 trying to do it all. You feel me? Exactly. So now. Doing the do it all stick, I try to do it all too. Like, how do you find yourself managing that? Because being also being an artist yourself, working on your own project yourself, and also stepping in the shoes of being a manager. And we know some people that feel like Michael Jordan fell doing it. He played for the Wizards. Some people can't manage the two two faces. The the actual worker face and the actual manager of the worker face. So how do you bring both of them together and come out with that one person that you can actually cause <laughs> Cause that's how I look at it. That's why I say it got to be the right person, because it, it, it when you we all know, like especially like nine times ten, everybody looking for a, a a young person, but Tay Dizzle ain't looking for somebody who don't know nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm looking for. I don't give a damn if you're fifty. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> age don't matter no more. You know what I'm saying? Age is out the window now. So it's 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 all about having the right mentality. You know what I'm saying? Hey, the right feel, the, the the just understanding that at the end of the day, this shit ain't gonna move if you don't make it move. You know what I'm saying? Now for us, sure that that on on the other side, we keeping you busy. We 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 keeping you doing shows. You know what I'm saying? We keeping you working. Like I'm gonna do everything on that part. You know what I'm saying? As a record label should do. You know what I'm saying? But. Yeah. Uh, we all know everything is is evolved around being on the internet, being active, doing things. You know what I'm saying? Creating um, attention. You know what I'm saying? It's because like, there's more people blowing up right now. I don't even got nothing to do with music. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's it, the game changed now. You know what I'm saying? There's more people blowing up just on funny stuff. Just on, you know what I'm saying? Just doing wave and wave. <laughs> <laughs> Back. It's blowing up. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's blowing up, just doing that. Like anything, bro. So it's like the game so easy now. It's so easy for you to be successful, but you just gotta be consistent. If you ain't if, if you ain't if, if you ain't gonna meet that with me, then I, I mean like we, we ain't gonna work. All right, Tay. Well, I have an MBA, so if you're taking applications. <laughs> <laughs> I would definitely love to see. You got to be fine, you got to be fine commentator too. Now you got to be fine. Oh, he fine. You oh he, he be jamming over. You hear him yet? Okay. You got to be fine. Hey, because the thing is, like, bro, you know what I'm saying? I, hey, I got ears. You know what I'm saying? It ain't my ears. But I do. I, I send it. I, I send it to my people who I know who gonna just hey, fuck with them. Hey, hell no, bro. So like, <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about people who really. And then done this shit, like you know what I'm saying? That then made big records, then 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 did shit that that go at it, you know what I'm saying? That you never know about. You feel me? Absolutely. 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 So you say your own label. Are you working on a bigger label, like being a smaller label connected to like a Sony or some of that uh Atlanta Records, or are you actually truly independent artists? I mean, it's just gonna be all independent because everything is so easy, right? Like you, you know, like being real with you. It's not a really a such thing as a bad deal because yeah. alone, you know what I'm saying? It's, so shit, the bank give you a loan, you fuck the money up, still gotta pay the bank, you know what I'm saying? Shit, but, yeah. so it's the same thing. So 
it's like I'd rather be independent because at the end of the day, I can blame it. It don't work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't have to look at like why you ain't do this for me or why you ain't do that. You know what I'm saying? Because I learned, I learned from my mistakes. Like I can't go back doing the same thing that I come from. You know what I'm saying? It's like a slap in the face. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's like, you didn't get it then, so like you still doing the same shit then. Right now, nah, bro, I don't think you're gonna ever get it, bro. So it's just like, you know, it's just best to do it on your own because shit, you gotta believe in yourself. Absolutely. Well, listen, Tay, we greatly appreciate you taking the time and being on the show with us, you know, and just being open and honest about your experiences because a lot of times um we don't get a lot of honesty or transparency when it comes to that. People just say, oh, well, I got here and we made it and we did this and we're doing that for, um, you know, I don't want to say social media purposes, but, you know, always showing the A side. It's very rare that you get to see the B side and the struggle. So we greatly appreciate you coming on the show, man, uh, and talking to us. So where you go, you got to tell everybody how to get in touch, especially the artists who are trying to get on your label. That's right. This ain't too good. It, it <laughs> um, yo, listen, I know I don't got that many pictures on my on my um on, on my IG because I, 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 I switch them up like every year I just go I'm gonna clean out, you know. <laughs> Hit me on IG, you know what I'm saying? T A Y D I Z M and that goes for TikTok and that goes for uh, Facebook, you know what I'm saying? Um Twitter is same thing, T A Y D I Z M. And that's again D A Y D I Z M. Hit me up, man. Fuck with your boy. Y'all already know what it is, man. I talk back real ass niggas since day one, and I ain't gonna change. You know what I'm saying? That's just what it is, man. I fuck with you guys, man. Appreciate y'all, man. Well, definitely. Oh, you got your project drop now. You gotta come back on the show and let her know that project drop now. Cause we wanna know about that project. That's right. Yeah, don't you don't want to do too. You wanna do all the things. <laughs> hey, come back, y'all. We all, hey, bro, when the come out, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, 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 I'm gonna definitely, you know what I'm saying? Get up with you guys on the project. Let, let, let you guys know what's going on. But y'all definitely get ready for Dance Zone, produced by Ghetto Styles, man. Dance Zone, it's gonna be the type of song that you can and still beautiful. Most definitely, most definitely. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you, brother. All right, man. All right. Oh man, great guy! You know, to be transparent like that, man, is really um, it's really good. You know, because a lot of times, like I was saying, people need to know what the struggle is, especially in that industry, and even as a megastar like T Pain, the struggles that he had. You know, exactly. Friend being evicted, brother being evicted, having to have somebody else come. And, you know, Akon really is a trooper. People really yeah. don't know what Akon does because he's not out there always flashing it. You know what I mean? From cutting yeah. big checks, I mean, big checks from having friends not going to jail to be able to cut checks and keep people in hotels until they can find rooms and things of that nature. You know, like I said, you only always see the lights. You never see the dark. Yeah. So it's definitely all good. That's true. But remember, it's, as people say, sometimes you give back, you get many blessings in return. Right. That's why his stuff stays successful while people around him are not so are more for him and not against him. Right. You know, you create a good bond. I mean, look at you got friends for life. You got people you know for sure you got your back versus people who I'm guessing don't got your back. I maybe have your back. Maybe not. I don't know. You know? Absolutely. So, well, Grace, you know, I appreciate it doing the show. I like doing these shows, man, but we still got to talk about you current, already know. current events. You already know, man. I was, Waiting on you to see it. I'm waiting on you to see it. <laughs> well, tell me, man. How did you feel about Wednesday? Watching it, whole thing go out on Wednesday. I, I know civil war, but I would have that have been a white guy on the side watching it going on. I'm the black guy watching it. The only difference is I ain't right there next to him. I ain't getting no cannonball flying over my head. I'm just like, <laughs> hey. so this one look like when white people get each other. Okay, I I tell people that's why I tell people I reevaluated how they said the civil war went because he. People don't understand. More people die spectating than actually in the Civil War. See, the only difference is we learn to sit out this one. Time out, y'all. Blacks said time out. Y'all can have this one. We ain't got to get in this one. <laughs> and it shows that funny thing is how nice they was when they were pushing them back. 
I have never seen this the nicest riot patrol in my life. I seen the one that throw tear gas at people, two people bean bag. They were like, excuse me, sir, can you move back a little bit? Can you move back a little bit? I'm like, they throwing rocks at them, they punching at them. Can you move back a little bit? Can you move? I'm like, if now I'm gonna say like this, I saw a tape. What what Biden said that if that would have been one of the Black Lives Matter movement, it would not have been such a nice pushback. It would not be such a nice riot patrol that went there. It probably a lot more. And the fact that the matter is that they got as far they did, which I'm be honest with you, George, don't don't judge me now. We know we couldn't get past the front gate. They be good about it. No, look, they, you're absolutely right. Okay. And he the president elect said it correctly. Okay. And I'm glad he said it. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because we have watched Black Lives Matters and other protests. I mean, think about the Black Lives Prep protest that happened where the husband and wife came out of their house pointing guns at them. Okay? Yeah. And then when the prosecutor prosecuted them after looking at the tape, they said they were scared for their lives. Well, being scared for your life and threatening somebody who is non-threatening to you in a menacing manner is a crime. Exactly. You have to understand the mentality, and I'm going to give you the mentality. From the time this president was in office, he told them it was okay. There was a reason why he brought Steve Bannon in. He brought Bannon in to signal to them that he's one of them. Okay? Yep. Two things. You'll notice when he said he's a nationalist, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, they changed from white nationalist to nationalist movement. That was the code. So, you know, people that look like us and wake up every day like us in our skin, we recognize the code. We know how you're saying it. We know how you meant it. Exactly. The problem is our counterparts don't believe that when we say, oh, this, that, or a third, it's like that. That's why I appreciate the president and the left saying, if exactly. it were black people, we would have seen a different response because we have seen a different response. Exactly. You know I mean? And we've seen a different response very recently. Exactly. So, look, I, I was heartbroken, but I was also expecting, I, I said to somebody last week, I said, he's not done. That's the first thing. No. And I knew that what uh, the, the gentleman said in Georgia, he was like, telling the president, you know, this has to stop, somebody's gonna die. I knew that's exactly what was gonna happen. The emotion that you saw, the visceralness, the anger, everything that you saw, you can't talk that down. You know, when you got people saying, we're willing to risk our lives for this, that means that we've gone from civil to bait to something else. Exactly. That's when it becomes scary. The issue that I have is everybody glazes it over. When you have major propaganda machines that puts this out and puts this out and puts this out, I don't mind that they put it out, but here's my point. We were always taught in the beginning, and I heard very young, even presidents like early presidents, Thomas Washington, I mean, uh, uh, Jefferson, saying, anything you don't want them to know, you put it in a book. Exactly. And at first they were talking about black people, but then again, it transcended to the undereducated, anything you don't want them to know, you put it in a book. The second thing that I learned from our, from America's forefathers, not even my forefathers, is this. Anything that you want to hide, the best hiding place is in plain sight. Exactly. Call it what you want to call it, the best hiding place is in plain sight. Exactly. It's now you're seeing the manifestation of the Tea Party. Tea Party came into effect because of Obama. This is the Tea Party on steroids with the Proud Boys and QAnon and everything else. And what the GOP is going to have to realize is now that they know that they have power and yield power, they're not going away. They're going to reinvent themselves. They may duck a little bit because now federal agents and everybody's looking for them. And now because Biden's in office, the FBI and the Department of Justice will be paying attention to them more. Since, you know, I think even Q9 got added to the domestic terrorist list. Yeah. You see what I mean? But exactly. that being said, there's, there's even educated people, people you would think that no book that are smart, that have degrees that wouldn't preach the nonsense that they're preaching. 
But the reason why they're doing it, they're doing it for political clout. Think about it. If I have a thousand people that feel that way, and I only have 10 people who are educated that feel this way, who do I want to vote for me? The thousand or the 10? The thousand. And that's been his mentality. He's been playing this game before he started running for president. Everybody thinks he's stupid. He's not stupid. He's smart. Mm -hmm. When he knew that he was losing, and I'm going to finish up with this. I know I'm talking wrong, but I've had to get this out for a while. The one person that he didn't want to run against was Joe Biden. And as God would have it, Joe Biden was the last person that got into the presidential race on the Democratic side. And Joe Biden was the last person to finish and win. He started looking for dirt on Joe Biden through his son, through the Ukraine. That's how afraid they were of him running. You see what I mean? And as God would have it, the one person he didn't want is the one person that got in. Exactly. And he's been losing his mind ever since. And I understand it. Look, everybody thinks he's crazy because of the loss. It's not the loss. It's everything else that happens after the exact charges in New York, charges in Maryland, charges in D.C. I think he has over 140 women that have lawsuits against him for sexual harassment. 140. Okay, he has other things that he has to sit here and answer. So it was no coincidence that they came up with this scheme to create a pack. You know how much money his pack raised? His pack has raised almost six hundred and seventeen million dollars begging people for money. Why? Because he lived his whole life using other people's money. From the time he was a kid, it was his father's money. When he became an investor, it was the investor's money or the bank's money. He never spent his own money. He never really does. And so now what happens? He raises $617 million, and that's the money he plans on using to settle all these debts besides the criminal stuff that's waiting for him in New York. Exactly. That's genius. That's the business standpoint. You understand? When you're in business, you think years ahead. You think prior to what happened. What's gonna happen this? What's gonna happen this? And we all know one thing he has he mastered is how to manipulate the media. That's right. He used the media to his advantage. Media love news. Media hate good news. He creates bad news. He creates that evil person the media wants to always report, always want to be. Because you know why? He gets the notoriety he needs. Media help him raise with joy that money because they kept him what on TV. On That's right. On TV, right. if let me look at for them, really, we want Hillary lost the race. It wasn't the fact that she spun up on the money, it wasn't the fact that she wasn't in the media standpoint, she wasn't news. Go my kissing babies, they news anymore. I don't care if you go kiss a baby, you slap the baby. Oh, now we're talking, you know, right. now we're gonna run yeah. over. Then I'll go back to the same aspect of the fact of the matter is that he used preliminary messages. We don't know what the guy used, what the guy says. Mama, when I was going to school, I had a teacher, very wired teacher, told me one thing. If someone want to put a message out, you don't always have to do it where people can see it, but they can hear it. Now, right. have you heard old saying that you had old records, back in the day records, strip on the backside, you play it over, you got messages in there. That's how a lot of cult groups, how the hate group used to pass their messages on. The reason, one reason why record sales were so high all the time, it wasn't the fact that people listen to music, it was the fact they had messages on them. The best way to pass a message around is where people can't see it, but they can still make money and distribute it. So think about it. If I want to pass a message to you, and I know if I get in trouble, I want to hear it, I go to jail for it, right? Right. I put it in a record, and I sell it to you. So I said, only sellers tell you what store to go to, how many times you need to buy it, and all the records sell out, all of a sudden you can't get a record no more. Sure. Right Sound familiar? A lot of records. I'm going to call a few artists. That the records are worth a lot of money now because of the fact they only sold 500 copies. They found weird to you. You trying to make money, but you only sell 500 records, and you stop. You know. And then look at this. Now look at the, the right thing. Now they think because they're going to peaches, man, it's going to be all proof of that. It's not. If you even though you're a peaches guy, he still have followers. He still have people to believe in his beliefs. So he may not have to run, but who to say one his followers run? And this guy, they could go back and just pay back what you said, Joy, who would hide and stay covered just enough to get that thousand, 20 million people to back him up. Now I'm going to go to old history back in there. That what Hitler did. Remember, I know the true story about Hitler. Hitler lost his first race. 
miserably lost his first race. It was right. embarrassing. He what he did was he went undercover and started building himself a following. Once he built himself an initial following that he could overthrow the person that ran and beat him, or he put enough dirt on the person to force him to quit or resign. That's what he did. It's the same philosophy, the same strategy this guy is doing now. No different, different time period, different person. It's only difference in the situation. Well, what people don't understand is his heritage is German. Okay. His heritage yeah. is German. All right. I think his great grandfather is German. So it's definitely all good. But listen, that's enough of me ranting and us talking about this. I know people are getting their full dose of it 24 hours a day. Listen, <laughs> yeah. we, got a, we got a banger tomorrow. Very special show. Mr. Pavlos. Pavlos, yes. Yeah will be with us tomorrow we have a 12 o'clock show eastern time so y'all check us out all right yeah. hey this What's is good. this is Frags. that was real talk with george and Frazier. we want to thank tay dims for coming on the show check hey, us dude. out tomorrow I'll tell you, <laughs> all right peace peace